I was working with GE and that's how I got into GE uh, way back in 2000. Uh, the first of its kind that Sabik was coming up. You know, today's generation is quite smart and uh, experiments to fuel growth and profitability. So since it's a it's an evolving domain, business is getting more and more complex to actually get certified in this domain. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the esteemed face time with leaders and initiative by World Development Corporation. My name is Tanay All and I'm an anchor at World Development Corporation. Face time with leaders is a platform for industry veterans to come together to share their knowledge, ideas, thoughts and best practices with one another as well as with upcoming industry leaders. We have one such domain stalwart on face time with leaders with us today Mr. Mahesh Sharma. We welcome you on the show sir. Thank you. As the business finance leader at Apario Retail since November 2021, he leads finance for various segments including wireless and consumer electronics contributing to revenue of approximately 1.2 billion US dollars. He holds holds responsibilities for P&L ownership, working capital management and implementing growth and profitability initiatives and is a member of Apario's leadership team. So sir to begin with Could you walk us through your journey from your initial role as assistant manager in finance at GE Consumer Finance to your current position as business finance leader at Apario Retail? How has your career trajectory shaped your approach to financial leadership? Uh, good morning. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me here uh, in this session. Uh, it's a very inspiring and engaging session. I look forward to it. Uh, in terms of describing my journey, I. I'm a chartered accountant. Uh, did my CA in Mumbai, and uh, as part of my industrial training, I was working with GE, and that's how I got into GE uh, way back in 2000 uh, for my first role. Uh, it was uh, interesting times at that point in time when uh, the retail finance space was evolving, and I decided to continue with the GE Countrywide, uh, is what it it used to be called at that point in time, uh, for. for some period and then i uh, took on a leadership program with g uh, which is called as financial management program uh, this program honed me across multiple g businesses uh, for four rotations graduating from this program i joined g plastics was the fpnl leader for g plastics for a couple of years did controllership commercial finance and then was promoted as a cfo for g plastics in 2007 2008 around that time at the age of 29 or 30 i became the cfo for that business and at that point in time it was about 1000 crore business after g plastics i continued with that system and g plastics was sold to sabic where i became the cfo of sabic innovative plastics and led the sabic india finance role for about about 4 to 5 years which included not just doing finance leadership for g plastics but also doing finance leadership for the technology center that sabic had set up and uh, managing another legal entity for sabic post that i came back to g for a bit and then joined a market research company called nielsen uh, this again is a very reputed name i was a cfo for g uh, for for nielsen south asia for about 2 years and then i uh, took on an interesting challenge to join amazon uh, that point in time the uh, e-commerce space was evolving was growing and i thought it, it it will be a good value addition to my finance leadership to learn e-commerce grounds up and that's where i joined uh, amazon uh, did two roles with amazon operations uh, covering supply chain covering uh, network losses cost of business waste etc and then joined apario which uh, which is one of the legal entities which is one of the largest sellers with amazon um, i have been the business finance leader here for the last more than 2 years leading multiple verticals so that's my uh, journey in a nutshell in terms of my trajectory it's been multiple roles from manufacturing to services to e-commerce and hence i feel uh, quite enriched with that experience in terms of having seen multiple businesses and done finance leadership for these businesses so that's one thing which is uh, unique about finance careers that you you can you can move across businesses and provide financial leadership to these businesses uh, the other question which uh, you talked about 
you know how my uh, approach to finance leadership has been i think generally speaking what finance leadership is about is hiring the right talent uh, building a strong team helping them grow anticipating risk and proactively holding teams accountable uh, working hand in hand with the business with the leaders to take bold decisions with obviously a lens of profitable growth right i think that's where holding teams accountable driving growth building teams <clears throat> building leaders is what uh, what finance leadership approach i have developed over the years so with over 20 years of experience spanning various finance function what would you consider the pivotal moments or projects that have significantly contributed to your professional growth and skill development uh well <clears throat> in terms of projects or pivotal moments there have been many interesting occasions where we used to end up dealing with multiple regulatory matters uh, way back uh, in my experience with ge where as finance sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone not just look at you know you need to do accounting you need to do fpna etc but also look at business business backward what issues business is facing and how can you uh, leverage your leadership leverage your finance core skills to solve those issues so i have been involved in multiple transfer pricing matters you know representing the company uh, in reg with regulatory authorities even though it was not my forte right uh, i did that because it was important for me to get the company out of a certain challenge right um in addition to that uh, when the sabic technology center was coming up this was again a unique challenge because it was a large investment uh, the first of its kind that sabic was coming up with in bangalore and here while managing my existing business uh, with g plastics or sabic innovative plastics i had to actually stretch myself travel every second week to bangalore and help uh the center uh, to be up and ready in the next in the in one one and a half to two years and from a finance perspective what this involved is uh project financing uh, uh you know the the entire capex management building a brand new team building systems building processes handling compliance and again this involved me moving out of the comfort zone but uh, it was all in all a very enriching experience uh cut to nielsen this was a very interesting uh experience as well because this involved turning around a business uh, from negative margins to positive margins and here we had to take multiple decisions with respect to people with respect to process with respect to cutting off cutting off the projects that we don't want to do which are not profitable yet making sure the team delivers at the end of the end, end of the day and that made it uh, again very enriching cut to amazon and apario here Uh, i have been involved in multiple projects with respect to optimization of the network reducing losses uh making sure inventory is placed right at the first time and it gets delivered uh, to the customer as soon as possible and at the optimum cost uh with apario it's been uh, experiences like again uh, turning around a business uh, in terms of meeting their numbers meeting their uh, meeting their profitability targets as well as making sure that we set the right processes with the brands that we work with uh so it's it's all in all been a very interesting experience for me so what advice would you give to our viewers today that can help them step up the corporate ladder well uh, i'm sure uh, you know today's generation is quite smart right uh, they are also in a hurry i would say right uh, they are in a hurry to grow hurry to make a lot of money etc etc and the way i see looking back at my career what is important is getting an education right uh, make sure that you are focusing on learning and learning never stops it's not just that if you've done your ca you've done your mba uh, that's the end of the world the learning has to continue that's what i feel very strongly uh, the other piece which i see in the current generation is they are always looking for a new role always looking for switching jobs always looking for more money i think it's sometimes important to look at career in the long term look at it as uh, an investment right if you are liking a role put your 100% right uh, and the returns will always follow you know you don't need to change jobs every year because some company is giving you 10% more 50% more 
that's the one advice which I would like to give uh, to the folks. And I think work-life balance is also very important. Uh, I've seen people who stretch 12 <clears throat> hours, 15 hours a day, uh, who are not managing their time well in the office. So it's important to be productive while you're at office. Have your good 9 to 6. Give it your 100%. And then chill, right? Uh, you know, have a good time over the weekend. Go back to your family. It's important to unwind. Uh, and also look at opportunities, how you can contribute to, to the business, how you can, uh, you know, be part of some projects where you can get recognized and also make a big impact. So how do you perceive the role of a CFO in today's dynamic business landscape, especially in the context of being a strategic business partner to the CEO and the board? And how do you ensure alignment between financial goals and broader organizational objectives? Well, today's landscape is ever-changing. It's very dynamic. And the CFO, in my view, needs to be aware of what is happening in the external world and how it impacts his company. Uh, he needs to play a very important role in managing risk, have a very solid understanding, grounds of understanding of uh, the regulatory environment. In addition, he should also be ready to take bold decisions and uh, experiments to fuel growth and profitability. Overall, the CFO has to be a, a, a co-pilot to the business, right? He has to ensure financial goals and organizational objectives, as you rightly said, they go hand in hand right from the time of the planning exercise, which involves a long-term planning, as well as then breaking that long-term planning into short-term tactical plans and have really strong execution mindset to deliver on those plans. And also be ready to, like I said, the dynamic environment, also be ready to adjust those plans to ensure the objectives are delivered and sometimes be willing to take some bold bets. Go by a gut feel, go by judgment uh, to understand what ha what is happening and how you can mold yourself to uh, change your approach uh, to respond to what's happening. So from leading finance across verticals, how and when did you develop an interest in ESG and corporate governance? Uh, well, this has been <clears throat> one of my uh, topics that I've been interested in <clears throat> from way back when I was the CFO for GE Plastics. I also happened to be on the board of GE Plastics uh, and Sabic and Nielsen. So for multiple legal entities, I've been on the board, uh, been part of that regulatory environment and that regulatory framework um, from close quarters in addition to managing uh, my CFO responsibilities. So this area has always attracted me. And as I complete uh, more than two decades of my experience, I feel this is one area which I can leverage the experience and give back uh, to, uh, to various companies, hopefully. Um, and ESG, again, is something which I'm drawn to this area. In fact, now companies have started adopting this as one of their key mottos uh, to drive sustainability, to drive environmental standards and adopt them, uh, not just in India, but globally. And, and I feel it's very important. It's, it's not just uh, for the sake of doing it, but it's also important to do the right thing for the society as you grow. I also feel if you are sustainable in your growth, it's actually helpful for your growth. Right in the long term, because because businesses would want to work with companies who are having a high bar on 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 these areas. So, as an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? Uh, well, in terms of values, I think I feel, uh, you know, since it's a it's an evolving domain, uh, businesses getting more and more complex and bigger being a finance leader i can i can potentially be on the board of companies uh, in the future and give a perspective which is finance backward but having worked with businesses closely i feel i can have a more objective and a neutral approach uh, being an independent director and and that's where i feel my experience across multiple industries, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's research, whether it's e-commerce, I can bring to the table a set of value systems to do right for the company, to do right for the environment, to do right for the employees, right? While ensuring that the corporate objectives are being delivered and 
and we are as a unit helping the company succeed <clears throat> sir as a leader in the finance domain what role do you see technology playing in transforming the finance function and how do you wish to leverage technology such as ai ml blockchain big data etc to disrupt automate and optimize financial processes within an organization no i see, i see technology uh, as a transformative force uh, frankly uh, it can revolutionize finance functions uh, enhance efficiency accuracy and strategic insight um, by leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning i think we can improve predictive anal analytics risk management and fraud detection uh, blockchain technology offers benefits like secure transactions transparent audits uh, and automated contracts big data analytics uh, gives us much deeper customer insights optimizes operations and en enables uh, comprehensive performance measurement by integrating these technologies we can streamline processes enhance transparency and position the organization at the forefront of financial innovation driving growth and competitive advantage So we're building a community here of industry magnates. The move is meant for cross pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge sharing community yeah. of corporate giants and industry experts. What are your thoughts about this initiative taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hevel Mehta, and the whole World Development Corporation team? Well, uh, to be frank with you, firstly, I'll just reflect back on how I got to know about it. I think again, it's thanks to digital technology, uh, where I was scrolling through one of these ads and. i happened to watch that video from <clears throat> beginning to end on the way to office and i was frankly quite uh, interested by the concept uh, of international directors program uh, i think it's a great initiative that mr zishan pathan and uh, mr hethal has taken have taken uh, i feel it's it's in the right direction for all the reasons i spoke about earlier where people like me who have worked across decades with with multiple kinds of experiences can add a lot of value to a lot of companies where there is a need for an independent perspective around how that company is run right and it it i feel uh, you know to get trained in this domain to actually get certified in this domain i think it's it's uh, it's amazing great sir it was fantastic conversing with you and i'm confident that your insights will truly inspire future leaders Thank you so much once again for joining us today and wish you the best for your future endeavors. Thank you Tane. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Have a great day.